Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and welcome to PhoneDog's live weekly podcast we have here on Ustream. This is also broadcast to our Facebook page if you want to watch it there. And we, of course, upload this to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching. Everyone on Ustream, thank you for being here live. Uh, we have some pretty interesting, uh, well, we have a lot to talk about and I've been crazy busy all day. Um, I actually haven't even had time to have, have lunch. I had, I was snacking on graham crackers before we started because, um, we had some leftover graham crackers because we had a, my husband and I made s'mores last night. So I was like, graham crackers, that's, that's a good lunch, right? But no, not really. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I realized while I was eating the graham crackers that I don't think I've ever eaten graham crackers outside of s'mores. It's like, and if you think about it, what are they for besides s'mores? It's like someone invented s'mores just so they could have a reason to sell graham crackers because they're the most obscure cracker ever. But anyway, so uh, I've just been really busy and uh, we do have a lot to talk about as usual. Again, thanks for being here. Speaking of topics, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can check out the description below the video because I uh, I have a timeline there. So I know it's an hour long, which is which is kind of a long time. Yeah, trust me, I know. But uh, you can check out the description so you don't have to you know watch the whole thing. You can just kind of skip around and listen to whatever you want to listen to. We do have a guest for today. Uh, he'll be joining us later on in the show. But first... Uh, I, we're going to talk about, actually I'm going to talk because you guys don't talk, you just leave random comments about stuff, but I'm going to talk about uh, the HTC Resound because Aaron posted his video on our YouTube channel, it's also on phonedog.com of course, and uh, the Amazon Kindle Fire review, I just posted my review on YouTube like 10 minutes ago, but um, I did the review, so I, I already know what I said. <laughs> um, so we're going to do those two things, and then we'll have our guest join us. So uh, first of all, yeah, starting with the HTC Resound, this is the first uh, Beats device in the U.S. Uh, so, you know, HTC and Monster, um, who owns Beats, um, Beats by Dr. Dre. They came and made this alliance together. And so this is the first device that we're seeing in the U.S. that really shows the fruits of that labor and of that partnership. And basically what it is, we talked about this last week, actually. We talked about the device um, briefly. It wasn't briefly. I think it was an entire topic. Um, but we talked about the phone last week. And it's a great smartphone, you know, has amazing specs. But the biggest thing is that it uh, ships with uh, Beats earbuds. I think they're the iBeats model. Um, and Aaron said that he thinks they're the $99 models. I don't know, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, so there's some, you know, pretty high quality earbuds that you get with the phone. And then also inside you get Beats technology, which uh, improves just the overall sound quality of the music. Now, as Aaron brought out in his uh, video review, the Beats technology actually only works in the music player. So like if you use Slacker Radio or Pandora or if you use like, you know, some other music player, then you don't get that, the bonus of the Beats technology in the device. Obviously you can use the earbuds like wherever, but uh, the Beats, Beats technology in the device only works with the music player. So, you know, kind of a bummer because like I don't really download a lot of music um, because... I just don't, I can't rationalize paying a dollar or, you know, a dollar thirty per song when I can listen to Slacker Radio for, like, free, you know, or Pandora or whatever. So, you know, like, for me, I don't download a lot of music, so the fact that that technology that's, you know, kind of a big deal and being hyped up a lot, you know, that I wouldn't be able to use that since I don't really use a music player, I use Slacker Radio. So, you know, kind of disappointing, but... Um, I know I probably am not, well, not that nobody uses a music player or that nobody uses, you know, Slacker or Pandora. I'm sure there are, you know, probably about half and half people that download music, you know, maybe coming from the iPhone or, you know, iPod have all their music on iTunes. And they can just copy it over. I'm sure there are a lot of people that use the music player. So for them, you know, it's not too bad. But for me, it'd be kind of pointless. Aside from getting the beats... But, you know, it's like $100 for the Beats, $300 for the phone, kind of, you know, you see my dilemma. Um, 
But uh, also, it's so it's an LTE device. Uh, just a quick run through of the phone, even though you've probably been drilled this. These specs have probably been drilled into your brain over the past month. Uh, 1.5. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you again, just because. Uh, 1.5 gigahertz dual core Qualcomm processor, Android 2.3 since 3.5, 8 megapixel dual LED flash, 1080p HD video capture, and a front facing camera. Anyway, so the point is. Uh, that it's an awesome phone. Aaron posted his review, so we want to know how does it actually perform outside of having an awesome spec sheet. And uh, overall, he said it's great. The display, he said, is gorgeous. Uh, it actually has a, a true HD display. The resolution is 1280 by 720. So it has a true HD display. He said it, it doesn't disappoint. It's, it's a gorgeous display. Um, but the problem is that, you know, since UI can be kind of heavy and it tends to like kind of bog down a device and make it lag a little bit, um, we've noticed that with other HTC devices in the past. And apparently that is also a problem with uh, the Resound. He said uh, the, pr the browser performance is a bit choppy and then the overall performance of the phone is sometimes laggy. Just, you know, in scrolling through menus or opening an app, um, you know, loading the home page once you're, you know, f going from an app to the home page. Just certain things are kind of laggy and choppy, which is disappointing. On the one hand, it's expected because, you know, like I said, HTC Sense kind of, ha you know, has a tendency to do that. But then again, it doesn't mean that, you know, I want lag. You know, it's like, okay, I have a reason, but that doesn't mean I want, you know, to have a laggy phone. So it's, um, you know... HTC Sense is probably the most popular UI, so I don't foresee this being a problem in terms of, you know, nobody buying it. Um, although I, I know a lot more people are getting frustrated by it now than, you know, what I used to hear about it. Uh, the camera, he said the camera is better than the Droid Razor. Now, the interesting thing, if you guys remember from last week, I said that the Droid Razor had the best uh, video capture quality that I'd seen you know, outside of something like maybe the iPhone, which people some, some people would say is better. But to me, it was the best that I've seen and heard. But he says, at least with still pictures, it's better than the Droid Razor. So uh, that's the HTC Resound. And uh, you can watch the full review. Those are just a couple of the notes. Uh, but I do, a couple of notes from the review. But I do want to move on to the Kindle Fire. Uh, since it just came out this week, the 15th, which was Tuesday. I actually bought it Tuesday night. And you know... Um, the, the, like, so we follow technology, so we know about all this crap that comes out, like the day it comes out, and, you know, we're all ready to go, and we're following the news, and, you know, as soon as we see the first review, we watch it. But that's us, and so I'm thinking, okay, I'm excited about the Kindle Fire, I'm gonna go look at it the day it's released, but, um, you know, I didn't think that other people really knew about it, I mean, I hadn't seen any commercials on TV, um, you know, I thought it would be like one of those tablets, just like every other tablet, you know, we know about it and we are excited for it, but no one else really is. Um, but I went to, uh, the store, I don't want to say which one, cause I don't want it to be like a marketing, but I went to the store and, uh, there were actually like people crowded around it to look at it. There was a, a couple in front of me and they were looking at it and the guy was giving his sales pitch. And then, so I was in line to look at it after them. And then right when I was about to, this other woman came and she wanted to look at it. And I was like, wow, people actually know about this thing. This is so cool. Because I get excited when people get excited about technology. And so um, it was it was weird. So yeah, apparently the Kindle Fire is not just a big deal in our world. It's like a big deal in general. Um, but anyway, I have the tablet. Here it is. You can watch the review um, but just, you know, it's proof. Um, yeah, and I really, I really like it. Now, I said this in the review, um, there's two things to keep in mind. One, it's $200. So, um, performance, I think, really reflects that. Now, Taylor brought out, um, Taylor Martin, who is our editor, one of our editors at Phone Dog, he also got the tablet, and he brought out in his first impressions article, that uh, it was very zippy for him. Now, it has a dual-core processor. It's a 1 gigahertz TIO map dual-core processor. Um, and so, you know, he says it's very quick. He says it's extremely quick. Um, and, you know, opening apps and scrolling and all that, it was, it was super fast. 
I had like basically the complete opposite experience. Um, my first night with the device, because I got it in the evening, uh, it was really laggy and really choppy, you know, web browsing and scrolling and then selecting a link or or using an app and, you know, navigating the app. It was just very, very slow. And I'm not very, very slow. That makes it sound extremely bad. But it was it was slow and it was laggy. And so I'm like, okay, did I get a defective unit or are we just kind of viewing this differently? I don't know. Um, ever since then, it's really evened out. And so I don't know if it's just that I've gotten used to it or... I don't know, maybe it just had to get used a little bit. I really don't know. But um, it's definitely not as bad as, you know, my first impression of it was. That being said, you know, like I said, it's a $200 tablet. So the performance does reflect that. It, it is still a little bit laggy um, in terms of uh, just kind of navigating app apps. I gave a, I showed a few examples in the review um, whenever I'm using like the ESPN Score Center app and scrolling through the different sections, it's it's just kind of laggy and choppy. Um, but overall, you know, it's it's fine, and I think you're definitely gonna gonna notice the lag here and there. But you know, I think you're like, okay, it's two hundred dollars, so this is kind of like a it's a semi tablet or like a slimmed down tablet. So I think the performance is something that you can understand, just so long as you know you keep that in mind. Um, but also content. Now, obviously, you know, it's not a productivity tablet, and we all know that, but I think there's a lot of people who who don't. Like, when I, when I was at the store and there were people looking at the tablet, um, like, w one couple didn't buy it because I think they had the impression that it was, like, a tablet, like the iPad. It had, you know, all of the millions of apps that the iPad does, or, you know, it can do everything that all of these other honeycomb tablets can do. And it, well, and it can't because it's really like, like I said, you know, a slimmed down tablet. So um, basically the easiest way to figure out, okay, what is this tablet for? Does it fit in with my needs? You know, what should I use it for? You see these tabs up here for all the content um, that Amazon provides that you can, you know, slide through. This is what it's for newsstand, books, music, video, docs, apps, and web. That's all it's for. It's not for productivity. I mean, there's a docs section, but it's, I mean, it's like for viewing documents, and that's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much all it's for. Books, watching movies, uh, browsing the web, and then uh, applications. You know, there's games. You use Amazon's App Store, which I'll get into in just a little bit. But, you know, so that's kind of, it's an entertainment device. It's something to take up time when you have free time and you want to play a game or you want to, you know, browse the web, but you don't want to get out your laptop, you know, just to check your email or something. It does have an email client. So that's what it's for. So the $200 price reflects in, in the performance, which is not perfect, and then also in the content. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, for me, it was it was great. It's everything I need in a tablet. It's everything I want in a tablet. And the price is perfect. Um, but, you know, I think there's a lot of people that just didn't understand that, or at least the people that were at the store considering it. So, um, yeah, you do have Amazon's app store. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think Amazon said that uh, they have about... Or about or over 10,000 apps, and of course those are Android apps that, you know, Amazon has like handpicked and, and stuck in their app store. So it's about 10,000 apps, which, you know, when you compare that to the Android market or, you know, Apple's app store, it's like, it's not as much. And so, you know, you may be thinking, you know, wow, that's, that's like hardly any apps. I mean, if it's supposed to be for apps and gaming, but there's like no apps, I mean, that just kind of seems like a paradox. But um, the apps, the app selection to me was, was fine. Um, you know, you may not have as many apps that do one thing, you know, instead of having like a hundred apps that do one thing, you may have like you know, four or five, but, you know, they're there and they're high quality apps and they work great. Um, for example, just for me, in, in terms of like an Android smartphone or an Android tablet, the apps that I use, I was able to find on here. For example, I use Seismic for Twitter. I have that. Uh, there's an email client already, although there are other email clients in the app store if you want to download them. Um, there's a weather app. It's AccuWeather, which is a very highly rated weather app. Uh, Pulse for news, Slacker Radio, like I talked about earlier, ESPN Score Center, 
Uh, let me see what else I have. There are also uh, Facebook and other Twitter apps, of course. Uh, IMDb, Flickster for movies, uh, Linpack, which is a qu- uh, not a quadrant, there's, which is a benchmark app. So you know, these are some of the apps that I have downloaded, which is basically the apps that they're basically the apps that I would download on a smartphone. And I never, I was never searching for an app, and I'm like, oh well, it doesn't have it because you know the app selection. I never really had that problem. So. I mean, if you download like tons of apps, you're probably going to find, you know, okay, I have this app on my phone, but it's not here. You probably will find that. Um, But for the most part, to me, it had all the apps that I use anyway, and uh, and they're good apps. Uh, Not to mention, oh, Amazon's App Store is very well designed, by the way. The way it's categorized, and then you can sort by like rating, by price, by newest. It's very, very well organized. Um, But also it has a free app of the day. So like yesterday, the free app of the day was this uh, email client, which is typically like $10, but it was free. And so, you know, I got that because I was like, well, heck, you know, I've never used it, but it's $10. So it's got to be good. Um, It's actually, it's much better than the stock email client. So, um, yeah, my overall, you know, review of the Kindle Fire is that it's, it's a great tablet. Um, it's a great little tablet for just doing stuff and taking up time and browsing the web. You know, it's not for like hardcore tablet users, but um, I think it's well worth the $200. And I said this in the review, um, if it were over $200, I probably would not be as satisfied with it. But because it's only $200, it's perfect. I think it does exactly what it's supposed to. It does it well enough and the price is great. So, um, yeah, you can watch the review where I talk more about it. Um, the review was like, I edit, I had to edit it a lot, first of all, which I have to edit like every video that I do because I don't know if you guys noticed, but I ramble a lot. I mean, I talk for an hour about technology, so obviously I'm really good at talking. So uh, I always have to edit videos, um, but this one was like even more so because <clears throat> there's so much to talk about. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I think it was originally like 30 minutes or something, or maybe longer, and I got it down to. No, it must have been longer than 30 minutes because I think right now it's 30 minutes. It's like there's a 15 minute and then a 14 minute. There's it's two parts. So it was even longer than 30 minutes. I had to cut it down a lot. But um, anyway, you can watch that. And uh, I've been pretty impressed with it. It's it's a pretty fun device. You know, no camera, no 3G, no GPS. Um, I think with everything that I was willing to do without, GPS was one of those I was like, uh, okay, I, that's kind of one that I would like to have because, you know, maps. Um, and that's a pretty basic, you know, smartphone tablet type function, but it doesn't have it, so you can't use it for maps. Um, and then, of course, like weather. So if you do download a weather app, obviously you won't be able to use a GPS functionality because it doesn't have it, but you can just enter your, um, enter your location manually, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, um, if you guys have any questions about it, I mean, you can watch the review, but also um, if you're watching this on YouTube if you, and if you have a question, you want to know, like, does it handle this well or can it do this? Just leave a comment and I check those comments. And so I'll try to respond to them. Guys on Ustream, if you want to leave a question, um, I'll try to check the stream, even though during the normal show, I usually don't because I'm just like, blah, 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 and so I don't really pay attention to what you guys are saying. But If you want to leave a comment or a question about it, I'll try to answer it. But that's the Kindle Fire. And then, of course, um, you can uh, watch the review. It is on Phone Dog now. It might not have shown up yet whenever we started, but it should at least be there now. Which reminds me, um, new site design on PhoneDog.com. And, like, dude, is does it not look great? It looks looks great. I admit it. It looks really good, right? I mean, I think for me, I'm more personally invested in the site because obviously I work for it. And so I'm on PhoneDog.com, like, literally all day. And and then also, you know, I want it to look good because I work for the site. So, You know, I think I'm more excited about it than the average person would be because, you know, I work for Phone Dog. But I, so I noticed like all the little things like, oh, that's different. Oh, oh, we got rid of that. Oh, that's new. And, and so I'm really excited about it. I think it's great. Um, It's, it's much better. um, The content that you want is, is right there. And then the content that you like sort of want, but it's not as important. It's just laid out much better. And and it has, it's, 
it's just awesome. You'll just have to go see it. And uh, we have some new content pieces like on the sides and the bottom. So just like, just take it in, just go to it and just just let it soak into you because it's, it's a very good new design. Um, but anyway, uh, we're going to have our special guest now. Uh, Jeb Brilliant is uh, the community manager for PhoneDog.com. He also runs Brilliant Expos, which is, you guessed it, an expo company. Um, and he's also he's just a, a tech blogger and an awesome guy all the way around who also has like a freaking awesome name. The first time, I, didn't, I don't think I told Jeb this when we were talking about it, but um, the first time Aaron introduced me to him over email, I was like, is his name really Jeb Brilliant? Because that's like... Awesome. I thought it was a screen name or something because I was like, no way that's his real name, but it is. Um, anyway, so he's a tech blogger. He has a site, The Mobile Perspective. And so uh, he's going to join the show and we're going to talk about everything else that happened this week. The new Blackberries, uh, just everything. Um, I am going to have to turn the volume down, guys. So if you notice that, it's because I turned it down. But just let me know if I need to change anything. That should be enough. Okay. Jeb call. I hope he answers. <laughs> I'm just kidding because we, we scheduled this. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. I just had to mute you on Ustream. Oh, <laughs> good. So you are on Ustream. That's great because maybe you'll be able to keep track of some of those comments better than I do because I really don't pay attention. It's hard <laughs> to while I'm talking. But uh, yeah, so welcome to the show, and of course, thanks for being here. Um, guys. Thanks so is, much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, guys, so this is Jeb. Um, did, you, where, did you hear the part where I was talking about your awesome name? Uh, yeah, I love my awesome name, so thank yeah. you. Well, and it's perfect for you know being an entrepreneur and starting your own company or your own business because it just makes everything sound so much better, just having the word brilliant in front of it. And then it's so cool that it's actually your name. So I think it's pretty awesome. So, yeah, some of the topics, um, you know, and I mentioned this to you before, some of the things, some of the big things that happened this week, we have the Nokia Lumia 800 review up, uh, some new Blackberries at Blackberry London, and then Google Music. Do you want to start with Google Music? Sure. Okay. Did you did you watch the live stream? I didn't get a chance to watch it because I was working. Did I you didn't get a it? chance to watch it either, but I was trying to keep up with the Twitter stream. Oh, okay. I, and uh, oh, go ahead. No, sorry, I was not going to say anything really important actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of excited. I think it's a big, big, huge step for Android. Um, in particular, and yes, for Google, but a really huge step for Android uh, trying to go head-to-head -head against the iPhone. Yeah, and I think <coughs> that's probably the, the biggest and probably the most obvious um, advantage, you know, that it now gives Android. Uh, before, no matter how great an Android device was and, and the specs and the speed and all that, you know, one thing that you just couldn't deny about the iPhone was that it had the ecosystem with music and iTunes, and it was just so much easier to download that content. But now, that's not really an advantage anymore because you have Google Music, and it's easy to download the music. Um, it is, but I, I, I personally, I see one huge issue with it, okay. and that's just it's going to suck data. People are going to, oh. people are going to either have to. Uh, load their music at home and think in advance, okay, what do I want to listen to before I leave the house or the office, or just suck down tons of data. And, uh, you know, I imagine it's not going to be too bad because it won't be the highest quality when, uh, when you're streaming it. But still, I, I just, it's a big issue these days. Yeah. So now you can download the, each song to your device, right? Just like yeah, before. Yeah, you okay. have, but you have to go in and check a box that says... Um, okay. Down, you know, download uh, to the device and keep it on the device. Okay, so just like before when it was in beta. Okay, so it's still the same system. Yeah, and, and that was one of the things that people brought out when um, music beta was first released was that, you know, yeah, it's a really great system and it's nice that we have it, but just that, that you are going to be streaming. And so data is probably going to be a huge problem. And then also uh, the music selection. Now I think, what they say? There's 18 
million, is it 8 million or 18 million songs that are available now, which is a great selection. 8 million, not 18 million. There's 8 That's million a lot of songs. songs. Yeah. <laughs> There's 8 million songs available now, which is a great selection. And I'm not sure how many songs are available on like iTunes or Amazon, but supposedly. It's a lot more, so, you know, there's that to consider. Of course, it's still fairly new, so hopefully they'll get more tracks in the future. But um, it's it's new, and I think that's kind of one of the things that it's just going to take a while before it, it builds up the library. Um, but there are some pretty cool features. Do you use Google Plus? I, I'm trying, yes. I'm okay. trying to use it more, but and so yes is the answer, but not, not really. a lot. Yeah, I, I don't have a Google Plus page yet, and people ask me, like, when are you going to get with the times and get a Google Plus page? And I'm like, dude, I'm doing good to use Twitter, so <laughs> no, I, I don't, but, um, so yeah, what I was going to mention is that you can recommend songs to your friends through Google Plus, which was kind of the obvious choice since it's Google. Um, yeah. And uh, but I think it's pretty cool that when you recommend a song, they can listen to the entire track, not just like you know a thirty or ninety second clip, which is pretty right. cool. Which is super cool, honestly. I think that's going to be huge and, and get people to buy more songs. Honestly, yeah. like yes, you can give it away for free once, but then you have to buy it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if you have to, but I think people will buy. Yeah. Well, and it's just easier to you know, like I know when I'm looking for a song to buy. And I can only hear like 30 or 90 seconds. You know, I don't know, like, is this the good part of the song? Is this the chorus? I mean, what part? Because if it sounds bad, like some songs, it takes a while before it, you know, gets into the good beat section. And so, yeah, I can just, it just seems like it'd be so much easier to tell if I want to buy a song or not. Uh, it does. Yeah, it's become... like when you buy a CD and they'd always put that one best song yeah. on the radio, and you're like, "Oh, this is gonna be the best album yeah. ever!" And, and then, then you're like, sucks. "Oh, yeah. <laughs> should have just um, bought the single." Actually, you know, I don't think I've bought a CD in like forever. But yeah, I just dated myself yeah. like we were talking about earlier. <laughs> I don't think I. Well, I've bought CDs, but not as much as I used to. You know, back in like the '90s, I actually remember the fir- the very first CD that I bought was Matchbox Twenty. Um, what was that called? It's not Someone Like You, that's a song. Um, anyway, I can't remember, but that was a great album. Of course, I followed that up with Hanson, which was, <laughs> not, yeah, but, you know, I was like 10, so Hanson was, was popular. They had some, they had that one good song, but that album actually was pretty good, if you were able to get over the Hanson aspect of it. But anyway, have you seen them lately, by the way? It's hilarious. Know, I haven't. Well, I've seen like one video that they had online and it was weird to see well, the one guy. He was always kind of like an older teenager, but the other ones, they were still kids. And now they're all grown up and they have kids and stuff. And yeah, and they're still making music. It's so strange. I know. And I think there was some magazine that's like a big deal magazine that said that they were the best rock band of the past, you know, whatever, 10 years or something. And I'm just like, really? I wish you could see my face right now. <laughs> I'm in shock. Yeah, well, that's what I heard. And I haven't listened to either new music. I know they've come out with a couple of albums. And they actually came to Dallas um, to the House of Blues, but I didn't see them. But I don't know, I guess apparently they're good. So you can now buy their new songs on Google Music. How about that? I would imagine, hey, maybe I'll, well, I'll get back to it in a sec, but I'm going to search for it right now. Okay. Chatting, look up yeah. Hanson. Maybe, yeah, and play it and see if it sounds good. Um, now, it does require Android 2.2, which uh, not all the devices have 2.2. I mean, obviously, most of them do. We've seen the um, the distribution charts that, that Google has released. But, you know, you do have to be on 2.2. And uh, it's available now. T-Mobile users actually have some advantages because you can bill the music. It just shows up on your cell phone bill, so you don't have to worry about you know paying with a credit card if you don't want to. Right. And, Which is super cool. I, yeah. I like that. Well, I'm surprised no one else does that. I mean, it seems like such an obvious thing to do, but I don't know. Carrier billing is a tough one. Is it just that they don't want to, or is it is it difficult, or is it easier for you? Because God, it's just so hard to make deals with the big telcos. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like I was, wa- I was listening to the Engadget Mobile co- podcast because Aaron was on there. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I 
Yeah, I did know, and I, I'm going to listen to it later. Okay, yeah, he was on there, and, and they were talking about carriers and just some of the dumb crap they do, like adding all of these navig oh, all the bloatware in general, but especially things like the navigation apps. It's like, I have an Android device with Google Maps. Why in the world would I pay $10 to use VZ Navigator or any app that you have to pay for? It's just, right. it's just yeah. dumb, but... I, I can think of only two people that uh, have actually paid for third-party navigation apps on Android, and uh, they, they just they they just like to spend money. I think. Did they? Know, they didn't know, or did they? Oh no, they knew. They they're mobile people, but you know they thought. Um, I forget what navigation system it was, but they thought it was so much more superior, and <laughs> no one really likes the voice on Android. I don't think. Oh, uh, okay. So. Uh I thought it was fine, but, you know. It's fine for me. Yeah. Well, and it's not like, you know, a standalone GPS where they have, like, a hundred voices to choose one, choose from, but it's free, so. It's free. Yeah, yeah. basically. Um, but anyway, that's Google Music, and uh, I'm excited because, you know, being an Android fan, I, I love recommending Android, but there was always that element of, you know, somebody that's not a tech nerd, and I know when they buy music, I know it's going to be difficult for them to figure out where do I buy it, how do I get it on my right. device. So there was always that. Now I can say, yes, get an Android device, device, and you have music right in the app store. So I think it's awesome. I think so, too. So I'm glad they did this. Yeah, and um, let me see. I guess that's about it. Uh, the Galaxy Nexus. Have you heard about that phone at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, released in the UK today, actually. And um, by the way, Cameron, who's the managing editor of today's iPhone, our iPhone site, uh, he's also in the chat room on Ustream. But he got the Galaxy Nexus today. He did an unboxing, and so it's going to be on Phone Dog. I don't think it's there yet, but it is going to be there. Uh, but anyway, this phone is pretty awesome. The disappointing thing is, like, why is it not in the U.S. yet? Um, which is anybody get, anybody's guess. We heard that it could come in uh, December, I think, which is, you know, not it's, too It's far cutting away. it close for the Christmas holiday. What are they thinking? Just get it out already. Yeah, well, and, you know, we heard that it was going to be launched on Black Friday, which was... Great, because that's when people do a lot of shopping, but then, you know, obviously we miss that. I mean, yeah, as long as they get it out before Christmas and at least, you know, a week or two in advance, I think it'd be fine. But um, it's definitely, I don't know, it's confusing. And then uh, we actually had an article on Phone Dog. Taylor wrote about this, about how they really need to launch this thing because... You know, that we don't even have a, a solid launch date yet, even though it was announced a month ago. And, like, we're willing to wait, obviously, because, you know, you have to wait for a phone. But the fact that we don't even know when it's coming is kind of surprising. And, I mean, obviously, it's not going to do anything to Google's record because, you know, they're Android. But it is still kind of frustrating. Well, Samsung's done this before. Other carriers have done this before. It's just, um, I, you know... Hope, I, I hope it's just them trying to finish it off and just yeah. make it perfect for us. Yeah, probably. But well, I mean, I guess if they launched it in in the UK in England today, then you know how much. What are, what else do they have to do? Yeah, well, and it's. I mean, it could be um, LTE. I mean, maybe they need to work out stuff with that. I don't know. We um we did speaking of just perfecting it. We got a report from. At P3 Droid, he's on Twitter, that's his screen name, and he said that the reason it was deleted is, or delayed is because they needed a little more baking. So I guess, yeah, maybe there were just some bugs that they needed to work out. And um, who knows, maybe we'll, they'll pull something out of the hat and launch it on all four carriers here. Actually, that would be pretty awesome. I don't that, see that happening, though. Well, of course not, but it would be really awesome. I, yeah. That, you well, know, make a lot of people happy. Yeah, well, and it's like, you know, speaking of that, of course, it's coming to Verizon, but a lot of people are actually upset that it has the Verizon branding on the back, which I guess, yeah, because it's a pure Google device. But to me, I'm like, well, it's on Verizon. So I don't know. But there are a lot of people upset about that. Um, I just saw on Twitter, and I, I, I hope it's okay to mention another blog's name. Is that okay? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. So I just saw uh, The Verge just posted on Twitter that it's uh, coming to Verizon on December 8th. Oh, 
okay, perfect. So yeah, a couple weeks before Christmas. Yeah. Genius. I'm a genius. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's cool. We actually we actually have a release date now. That's pretty. Is that confirmed or was that I'm, just? I'm first? gonna open it right now and okay, look. Cool. But I mean, either way, it's great that they have it before Christmas because it yeah. just it helps everyone's numbers. It helps sell the device. I mean, I don't know. I'm happy to see it. I'll, yeah. I'll be happy to see it here. Um, um, one point, it will. This is for David J. Uh, Timo News that um, it's going to work on AT and T and T Mobile, the GSM version. I know he was getting a thousand questions yesterday. Uh, will it work on both? And the answer is yes, according to him. Okay, cool. Now, will it be, um, so it'll be 3G on AT&T, but on T-Mobile, do you think it'll be Edge only? No, I'm pretty, no, it, they made it sound like, he made it sound like it, it will be 3G on T-Mobile. He said it's oh. going to be Pentaband. Oh, okay. So wow, that's... every Nokia Pentaband phone that I have uh, works on AT&T and T-Mobile 3G, so it's okay, good. Okay, cool. Yeah, because... Sure. I remember, I think the Nexus S and then the Nexus One before the one that wasn't T-Mobile. It was there was that problem. It was three G on AT and T, but not on T-Mobile. So that's nice. That's actually very cool. Right. So, and and by the way, though, you you tried you touched on something that it's going if it does have the Verizon branding on the back, that'll be a first because the uh, HTC Nexus One and the Samsung yeah. Nexus S, neither one of them had carrier branding. Yeah, that's what I remember. And then also, you know, another nice thing about getting the device is that there's no bloatware. And so I don't think there's any bloatware, at least from what I've heard. Of course, it's only in the UK. We don't have like an official US version, but I hope there's no bloatware. I hope Verizon doesn't crap it up with their stupid yeah. software that nobody I, uses. I'll, I'll only believe it when I see it from Verizon that it won't be just filled with their bloatware. Well, and Verizon's one of the worst. I mean, I think AT&T has a lot. Um, T-Mobile isn't too bad. They had a lot of apps, but they're not necessarily T-Mobile apps. They're just apps. But Verizon, they have an app for, like, everything, and it's VZ this and vz navigator and vcast music and vcast movies and it's just like and again we're on android the market has all of that for probably free but hopefully we right. won't see that on the galaxy nexus let's hope so yeah um okay do you want to do you want to talk about the nokia lumia sure i'm excited I, if i can start off yeah i'm i'm really excited about it um, I'm hoping that they'll send me one to review soon. Um, that would be nice yeah. if Nokia is listening. But um, it, yeah, it's going to be an amazing phone. I've heard such great reviews of it. The only single tiny little negative thing is kind of a big deal, but it just doesn't have the greatest camera in the world. Which you know, I mean, if you're coming from Android, you know, what do you you know, you can't have that high of an expectation. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. Pretty, yeah. Um, I'm really excited about it too. I watched, um, Aaron's review and of course there's hardly anything negative to say about it. Um, it's just, I think probably the one thing is probably the camera and the display might be too small for some. I mean, maybe for not everyone, but I think it might be too small for some. Well, but there are rumors about the, uh, Nokia 900 launching, um, probably around CES or Mobile World Congress yeah. in January or February. And that's supposed to have a 4.3 inch screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I uh, I heard about that this morning, I think, and I tweeted. I was like, "Please come to the U.S. Please come to the U.S. I just want." I one saw of that. These. Yeah, I want one of these high end Windows Phone devices to come to the U.S. from Nokia. I mean, you know, like we talked about this, the um, the seven ten, the other one, the other Lumia. Like it's fine, and it's Windows Phone, so obviously it's you know going to have good performance, the same basic specs, but just the hardware of the 800 and you know hopefully the 900 it's just it's just great whenever i was watching the review by aaron i was like man i want that device and i don't get that way about a lot of phones because i see them every day but that one that one looks good i wouldn't mind having that one or the 900 that would be even better i will say though just because i'm a huge nokia fanboy and i'll admit to that and you know stand up and say it <laughs> um you typically they're the 710 versus the 800 the 710 will still have pretty good feel to it it won't seem cheap St uh, historically i can't say for sure i haven't held the 710 yet but yeah. it's not like other other devices and other manufacturers where the lower end phone always just feels like crap and it's going to be the cheapie that you buy for the kids and get yourself the nice expensive one it, it they almost always all feel pretty good yeah it just it looked 
I guess just the way it looked. I mean, obviously, I had it looks awesome to me. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, it just looks like kind of like the cheap plastic casing that you know Samsung or LG uses. And I guess maybe that's just because I saw it right next to the 800, and the 800 just looked so good that it just made the 710 not look as good. But the 800 maybe. looked so standard to me. Really? You don't like yeah. the design? Oh, I love the design of the 800, but, it, it, you know, all the phones are dark. All the phones are gray or black yeah. or, you know, uh, uh, brushed silver or, you know, something. The eight. 800, the 710 was just gorgeous in the white. Huh. I feel the complete <laughs> <laughs> But I guess, yeah, everyone's different. Um, I thought Can it you was tell I'm a fan? Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I thought it was funny the way that Nokia described it, you know, the hardware and its unibody design. They call it polycarbonate, but it's basically just plastic. But just the way that they word it just makes it sound so much better. And who knows, I may get it in my hand and be like, oh, so it's just a chunk of plastic then. But who knows? It just looked great. I guess that's all it was. Yeah, I, I mean, I've heard the 800 feels amazing, just feels like it's... It's the lightest brick in the world. Like, it's just so solid, but light, and, and just feels good in the hand. Yeah. Well, and uh, Aaron, I think probably most of the review, Aaron was just talking about how good it felt in the hand and the design, and he just talked about it for so long, and I was like, man, I really want it now. But... I know. And, and I have to say, this is, I, I don't even really want to admit this publicly, but I'm kind of wanting to go play with my Hotmail account again. I created a... a <laughs> I think it's called a live account now. Yeah. So I'm my email at live.com. And I went in and they have a great suite of, of, um, of productivity uh, stuff going on, yeah. PowerPoint, Word, Excel. And I was like, wow, this is great. And if I could do this on the phone, that would be amazing. And, and I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm excited about Microsoft in a strange way because I'm an <laughs> Apple user, but I'm actually kind of excited. I know. I was just thinking about that the other day. Um, who would have thought that the company to come out with an OS that is considered by some to be more attractive than, you know, another OS on the market and maybe even as attractive as Apple's OS, who would have thought it would be Microsoft that would do I that? I mean, of all companies, it's just, it's just not who they are, but they did it. And I think it looks great. I use Windows Phone, so I know what you're talking about with the, with Word. And I, I don't use that so much just because... I use a Mac, so I don't use Office anyway, but um, like OneNote, I use that a lot to make my to-do list, and then I'll pin it to my start screen. It is pretty cool, and then I can imagine that if you do use those services, other business users that probably do, yeah, it's very convenient and functional. I mean, you can actually do a lot with the Office suite on your phone in terms of editing, so no, it's pretty, right. it's pretty exciting. One of my, the biggest detractors for me on my iPhone is that it doesn't have Google Docs. There's not really yeah. a good app for Google Docs. And it's one of the biggest reasons that I, I just, I usually still carry an Android phone with me everywhere I go. Um, and I do all my writing in the cloud for my blog and any, anything else that I write for. Um, I always do it in Google Docs. And I could, I could really see myself switching over back to um, Hotmail. And I say back to, that was like over 10 years ago. <laughs> but um, back to Hotmail or, or MSN or whatever, live now, and uh, using their cloud. I think yeah. it's called SkyDrive. Yeah. Well, you know, and um, you don't have to have, I mean, you ha you can have a live account or a Hotmail account. And so, you know, I obviously have one, but I never use it outside of just, you know, for the purpose of linking my device to the cloud. But I still use like Gmail. Um, our how, do you, how do you sync your contacts and calendar then? Um, it's a lot like Google, or a lot like well, Android. Yeah, you go, there's in the setting. Do you have a Windows phone device, or you just I don't about? have one at the okay. moment, no. Okay, yeah, you just go to settings, and then there's a, there's a list for accounts, and you go in there, and you can add um, email, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, anyway, and so I just add it. And then just like Android, you can choose to sync uh, contacts, calendar, pictures, uh, one or all or just some of them. So yeah, I have my live account. But I'm so I, impressed. Yeah, it's I know it's pretty cool. And so like I have my contacts linked from my Google, yeah my Gmail account, but then my phone dog account links my email, and then my contacts <laughs> come from somewhere else. It's like 
Because, yeah, I don't use Hotmail either, but I had to get the account. So it's it's actually very well designed. I think a lot of people think that when they go to Windows Phone, they're like, well, I don't want to use Hotmail and Microsoft and all that. But I'm like, you don't actually have to. You can use whatever you want to use. But I should stop talking about it because someone's going to call me a Windows Phone fan girl. <laughs> I think I talk about it. Well, I use Windows Phone, so obviously I'm a fan. But I also love Android. Um, as much as people try to call me an Android hater, I don't know where that comes from. I do love Android. Um, but anyway, it's 545, which is usually whenever we, um, during the podcast, go to the open q and I don't know if you want to stay for that or if you have other stuff to do. You can take care of that. It's up to you. I'd be happy to stay if you'll have me. Okay, yeah. Um, so the guys on Ustream just ask random questions and I try to answer them. <laughs> and then... Um, I'm, also I'm not in- seeing the questions, so if you're going to, do you mind reading them aloud? Okay, yeah, I'll read, them. I'll read the ones aloud um, that are good questions, I guess. And then we also sometimes get some from Facebook, although I don't see any there right now. Um, but I'll be checking that too, guys. So on Ustream, if you have a question for me or Jeb, just ask it. Um, okay, I know you're not getting the LG as Steam, hold on, Ustream kind of jumps around sometimes. I know you're not getting the LG Steam review unit, so I was wondering if you have, uh, if you can give us your thoughts on it. Have you seen or used the LG Steam? No, I, I haven't. Yeah, I think it's basically just the LG Revolution, but on Metro PCS. Yes. So I've told other people this. If you want to see a review of the LG Steam, Basically, and you want it to be from us, basically just watch our LG Revolution review and it's basically the same device. Um, personally, I'm not very fond of LG's UI. Just certain elements like the way the app drawer is categorized, that to me is pointless. And then a couple of other things. So um, that's what I have to say about that. But then also check out the Revolution review. It'd probably be really helpful. <clears throat> Okay, do you agree that the Kindle Fire lock screen is really good looking? Uh, It's just a picture, and then you slide to unlock just like any other Android device. Um, Nook tablet or Kindle Fire? What do you think, Jeb, or neither? I'm I'm not familiar with the Nook tablet yet, but I'm kind of excited about the Fire. I really am. I think it would be an awesome first experience for a lot of people with Android and a book reading device. Yeah, and I we were talking about this before. Um, I was talking about my Kindle Fire review. And now that you mention it, yeah, for first-time tablet users, and I think, you know, people that maybe want to try something other than the iPad or maybe just want to try a tablet in general but don't want to spend too much money because they don't know what to expect or they don't know how useful it's going to be, I think it would be um, helpful. As an ebook reader... I mean, it's it doesn't have the e e ink technology. It's just an LCD display. So it was it kind of started hurting my eyes after a while. But I don't know. I mean, they have different settings. I put it like on the the black background with the white text. That helps. Um, but probably not for like prolonged reading. I would imagine. Uh, let me see. Should I hold out on switching over to Windows Phone? I have the Nexus One. So if I do, I'm basically getting about the same specs um and from android to windows phone it is a very different experience um i think it's great the only thing you're going to miss is the ability to customize you can't really do very much with windows phone it's beautiful and it's elegant but you're not going to be able to spend like hours customizing your device um much like ios you know you can't really customize it too much One of the big things whenever people ask me similar questions to go from Android to anything else, I always talk about losing Google Maps. Um, Is there a great Maps program at the very moment for anything besides? I know Nokia um, Windows phones have Nokia Drive, but what about the rest of them? Um, Bing Maps is actually, and before I say that, I was like everyone else. I made fun of Bing, like, ridiculously, because everyone just (laughs) laughs at it because it's from Microsoft, and I guess that's the only reason why. But um, Bing Maps is actually a very good Maps application. In in reality, in terms of um, location, it's extremely accurate with my location, even more so than Google Maps. Um, I can be like in my apartment and then I just go across the parking lot and it will track me in a matter of just like a hundred steps. So it's pretty crazy. 
Yeah, and you know, for directions again, it's great. Now, um, for turn by turn navigation, it doesn't quite have that yet. So yeah, you will miss that from Google Maps. Um, again, it'll give you the directions and it will speak them to you as long as you physically scroll through from one item to another, and then it'll speak the next one to you once you get close to it. Sort of, so it's sort of like half manual and then half turn by turn. So, Seriously, that's not safe. Yeah, well, and it's basically pointless. I mean, it's like yeah, you, know, you can't use that while you're driving. Yeah, and I don't because for that reason, I'm so I'm like scrolling, and it's easier to just you know either yeah use Google Maps. So that aspect definitely lacking a lot, and I haven't tried anything else. I don't think there's another decent app with turn by turn navigation, but just the maps application itself is actually very well designed. I've used the Nokia navigation uh, a ton on um, Symbian phones on Nokia, previous uh, operating system for Nokia, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. So I have high, really high expectations for Nokia Drive on um, Windows phones. Well, and just looking at the 3D maps, which, you know, Google does the same thing, um, but it's just nice that it has it. It looked pretty cool. Um, I saw a question about uh, when do you think ice cream sandwich will come out? <laughs> well, for all, I mean, obviously when the Google, when the Samsung Nexus comes out, um, but for everyone, that's going to vary depending on the manufacturer. I think, do you remember, was it HTC and Motorola that said they're going to have it out like first part of next year? I don't believe any of it. I mean, yes, <laughs> I believe that was them, but yeah. it's like the next 18 months it'll be rolling out. Yeah, basically. Um, of course, I mean, Google says that with Ice Cream Sandwich, everything is going to be different. You know, devices are going to get it on time. Uh, you're not going to have to wait as long. And so this is supposed to be the one that ends fragmentation or at least, you know, makes it not such a big deal. But um, Unless I'm wrong, but it's still up to Samsung and it has to get through Samsung's testing and, and yeah. HTC's testing and LG's testing and that's what holds it back. Well, um, and like, you know, a lot of it's just that they have these custom skins. And so you think, well, if it's ready, then it's ready, right? Well, I mean, when they have custom skins, they have to test it with their skin. And that's going to be different for everyone. So, yeah, it just, it's just going to take time. And there's some of it that's just out of their control. Uh, it's like, you know, gingerbread. Uh, you know, the whole debacle with the Galaxy S devices in the right. U.S., some of them just now got 2.3, whereas... The European model had it like forever ago. Right. And My so, cousin had that. He had um, 2.2 for the longest time. Yeah. And he was so upset that he's like, why did I buy this device? <laughs> I want the update. I want 2.3. Yeah. And so some of it is a manufacturer, but then, you know, obviously some of it is the carriers. And so when you have, you know, two groups that have to do their own testing and then decide for themselves, it's just going to take time. And of course, Google, um, made alliances with a lot of companies and is basically going to try to force them to get it done in a more timely manner. But it's just logistics. You know, sometimes it just takes longer. No, it's not. These are billion dollar <laughs> companies. They can do it. Well, I just like giving them the benefit of the doubt. So I don't because okay. I'm just pessimistic about, you know, they, they can just get it out. They have so much money. Don't, you know, don't let their developers go home for one week straight. Just pay them for 20, you know, 24 yeah. hours a day just to work, 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 work. Get it out. And people will be so happy versus just so upset like the, with the Galaxy S. Yeah. Well, so. and you wonder, like, how does it actually work? You know, in the background, you know, behind the scenes, how long does it actually take? Does it really take only a week or two? Or does it actually take a couple of months? I mean, we don't know. But obviously, it'd be nice to know. Well, how many developers do they have working on it at the time? Two, three, five. Yeah. Why not fifty? Yeah. You know. Um, somebody said. Sorry, we take less time on each question. Be fair to everyone. Sorry, just, just two people <laughs> talking, so we get to rambling. Um, okay. Any news on the quad core flexible screen phones for 2012? Well, quad core is all the rage now uh, for tablets, and then we heard about. Uh, did you hear about that? HTC quad core phone. I can't remember what it was. Yes, but I'm. I'm again. I don't want to just sound pessimistic all the time. <laughs> but I remember when the dual core Android phones came out. Right in the very beginning, everyone was like, "Oh, dual core, dual core is the greatest thing ever. I love it." But it didn't make the phones any faster for about yeah. six months to maybe nine to ten months, maybe maybe even longer. 
Yeah, well, and a lot of that was just because uh, 2.2 didn't really support dual cores, or it didn't take advantage of it, and 2.3 did. So, you know, devices that didn't have 2.3, it was pretty much pointless. Um, uh, so, is is am I right about that? Is that true? The, what, the quad core on the... Um, the, the how 2.2 the didn't support dual cores. <sighs> You're, it makes sense, but I'm, okay. I don't remember honestly. Okay, I think that was the case. So with there's so many cores, Android phones, it's so hard to keep yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, but um, with quad cores, yeah, I mean it should help. And of course, the fact that Android needs a quad, but that's a that's an entirely different topic. Um, How fast will these phones be with a quad core? Yeah, well, and that's I mean, of course, when you put all these skins on it, and it's like the poor phone, it just can't handle it. But hopefully, <laughs> with a quad core processor. It should be fine, no matter how heavy the skin is. Um, that but the poor it, phone. But <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the other question is, with the quad core, are all the phones going to start off at three to four hundred dollars that are quad core. Yeah, or yeah, I don't know. I was just acknowledging. Yeah. Um, well, and it's like four G phones. Eight or Verizon seems to think they can charge a hundred dollars extra just because it's an LTE device, which is frustrating and dumb. But hopefully it and, won't be the same. And how Sprint still charges ten dollars more a month to have yeah. uh, LTE, four G, whatever, they whatever actually, they're calling it this week. Yeah, that's actually they changed that to now every smartphone you pay your data plan, but then there's just this ten dollar charge just because. Yeah, it used to be only the four G devices, but now it's all of their smartphones. How did I miss that? They changed it so all the smartphones pay their whatever, whatever it is, X yeah. amount for. Data, data for internet and then and it's then just ten dollar tax like hey we're gonna just tax you, you a little a smartphone, more smartphone i guess unless they change it i didn't hear about them changing it back someone let me know sydney please stop rambling <laughs> stop asking me questions i won't have to talk about them sorry i'm making you ramble <laughs> that's okay um let me see what is your mr brilliance input on iphone 4s okay what do you what's your input on that Mr. Brilliant, wow. <laughs> um, oh, I'm so excited about the 4S. Like, I, I want one. I'm, a, I'm an iPhone 4 user right now. Um, I, this is my first iPhone. I just got it in June. I love it. And, but really, the only two things that attract me that much to the 4S is Siri and, um, Siri and the camera. Oh, yeah. Well, that's it's good. the camera. Yeah, well, everything else is pretty much the same, which is fine because the iPhone 4 was a good phone anyway. But I think a lot of people were disappointed that it wasn't, you know, as big of an improvement as they expected. Um, but I agree. Can we, we can talk about that for 30 minutes at yeah. another time. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I agree. I actually, my sister in law, she just got the iPhone 4. She was going to get, well, she didn't have a smartphone at all. So this is her first smartphone. She was going to get the Good 4S. Good for her, joining the masses. <laughs> but um, the iPhone 4 was only $100. And so she's like, well, I mean, I can't pass that up because it's still a great phone. And yeah, I mean, for Siri, if you're not the type of person that uses that, then it's not a big deal. And then the better camera, I mean, again, I carry around a point-and-shoot camera whenever I'm actually going to be taking pictures. And uh, But I don't know. They say it can replace a point-and-shoot. So. It's, it's replaced my point-and-shoot. It really has. I, my daughter had a performance this morning for Thanksgiving, and mm -hmm. we didn't bring our point-and-shoot, my wife and I. We just brought our iPhone 4s. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. You know, it's a, it's a point-and-shoot replacement, I think. Well, and someone, oh, go ahead, sorry. Well, and I was just going to point out that, you know, 4S is even better, so you probably like that. I would, but I'm probably going to hold out for the 5 in June. Yeah. Well, and that's so. what we said. You know, if you have, like, the iPhone 3GS or the 3G, definitely go for the iPhone 4S. But if you have the 4, it's not really worth it to upgrade. You know, we just said wait for the iPhone 5. Um, let me see if I can get another question I just wanted to point out while you're looking, Waze was a great app. Someone someone mentioned it. If I'm allowed to mention apps, oh yeah, yeah. Someone mentioned Waze for social driving. Oh, okay. Navigation. Um, I just recent. Okay, you stream the chat when it was jumping everywhere. Okay, what do you think <laughs> about OS animations? Uh, do you think there should be a lot to make it look pretty, or is it annoying? It's annoying when it slows the phone down. Um, yeah. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I can't find the question again. Um, but yeah, they're pretty and they're great. Um, like Moto Blur has some pretty good transitions and animations. Uh, Windows Phone has great animations. But yeah, when, they're, when the animation is like choppy, 
it completely defeats the purpose. So I would rather just have no animation than a choppy animation. Yeah. Can I answer a quick question that yeah. was on up? Uh oh, I think I just lost you. Um, oh, can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear oh, you okay. now. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't think anyone knows. Someone asked, and I apologize. I can't see who. Oh, Nokia C3 just asked something about when what's going to be on sale if, uh, if Apple will be what what the price will be for Apple iPod Touch, and I don't think anyone knows that for Black Friday, yeah. unless maybe at Target they're selling it. But I don't think we'll know if it's going to be in the Apple Store how much yeah. it'll cost. I uh, I saw an ad <coughs> for Black Friday for Best Buy. They're going to have it said. For their MacBooks and iMacs, sixty to two hundred dollars off. So I was like, "Well, that's wow. great. I'll pay for the taxes <laughs> at least." There's wow. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if it's two hundred dollars, then yeah, that's kind of a good deal. But they never have good deals on Apple products, so I wouldn't expect anything, even for Black Friday, for an iPod Touch. Um, okay, at six o'clock. Let me see if we can get one more question. Do you have any news on? Uh, Tegra 3 and Ice Cream Sandwich Tablets. Um, Tegra 3 is the quad-core processor for tablets. Have you heard about that, Jeb? Because this yeah. is freaking awesome. It's um, Yeah, it's going to step everything up uh, a yeah. huge notch. Yeah, the Transformer Prime is the first one that we heard about it. In terms of news, uh, we heard the Transformer Prime could come in December. And then we heard about, yeah, the HTC Quattro, another Quattro, tablet. That was it. Yeah, uh, with a quad core processor. Uh, we just, it just said early 2012 for the release date, so I don't have anything solid. Um, I think these international companies, most of their releases will be based around CES. Yeah. And if they make phones, it could be at Mobile World Congress and at the end of February. Um, that's usually when most yeah. of these companies are releasing their th their devices right around yeah. those two events. Well, that's usually when we see everything. And then, you know, it might be a month or two before we see them in the States. Of course, you know, you, then you have something like the Droid Bionic, which was released like almost a year after CES where it was announced. But... That's kind of a unique uh, story, but uh, it's six oh one, which we have to we have to end it now. But um, thanks, Jeb, for joining the show and, and being a co-host, so I don't have to talk the entire time. I appreciate that. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, I'm gonna hang up now before I end the podcast. That way, you can say bye to the guys, and then I'll end the end the show. Does that sound good? Perfect. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, maybe I'll see you again sometime. All right. Bye. I'll see you Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good weekend. You too. So, yeah, thanks, Jeff, for joining the show. Thank you guys for watching. Again, you can watch the recording of this on YouTube and uh, leave a comment if you want to, and I'll be checking those. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, my screen name is phonedog underscore Sydney. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them if I can. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time next week. We moved it this week, obviously, to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. But next week, we'll be back at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So I will see you guys next week. Bye.